Okay, I thought I'd do a little review on um, what I stock on my locksmith van. It's a little bit different. Everybody's going to be a little bit different on what they stock. But uh, I'm a real believer in if you have it, you will make more money versus if you tell the customer you got to order it. And then you got to come back. Well, then you got another trip, you know. And it's, it's a lot better if you have the stuff. So what I stock, I stock a lot of commercial lever handles. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Over here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So about 20 commercial lever handles on the van. And you say, why do I stock so many commercial handles? Because you don't need to stock that many. I stock that many because I buy them 500 at a time. So in my shop, I have a ton of commercial lever handles. And they're a great profit maker. Um, the grade twos go for about 127. The grade, I do carry US lot grade ones. I'm a big fan of their grade ones. They have a nice grade one lever. And I'm trying to think what I sell those for. I haven't looked up in the US lock book lately. Um, I think they're around 225 is what I sell them for. So uh, there's a big profit margin on all these. Um, and then as far as residential handles, I carry no lever handles in residential just because there's so many different types to carry and you don't have room on the van. So pretty much I got it broke down to ball handles. Everything I have is ball handles. So what I do is I'll carry four of everything. So I carry four polished brass ball handles and here's four polished brass ball handles and then behind it I got four polished brass deadbolts. So polished brass and then over here this would be satin nickel all, all you know I'm out of them here I gotta fill it back up but these would be satin nickel and and these are all slage keyway on the top so sat, satin nickel four of each and then over or no, or no this is our stainless steel I'm sorry stainless steel four of each I got these other ones reordered and then over here satin nickel so I got four four and four and then I do the exact same thing in quick set polished brass stainless steel and then satin nickel and then up here I carry a, a, a couple extra one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and these are all brass deadbolts. It's more common, so and those are all in the slage keyway. Um, and then I have a shop filled with them. So the thing is, if I know I'm going on a job and I'm going to be replacing them, uh, then I would load up the van like I hear, have it here in the box. I threw a bunch in for a job instead of taking them from my inventory on my van. Pretty much I keep the inventory on the van for when you're rekeying a building, the person wants their house all keyed the same, but one of them's a quick set, all the rest are slayed. So now we could grab one out of here and finish the job, you don't have to come back. So pretty much that's why that's on here like that. As far as safe locks go, um, I carry almost all the guard. And the reason why is they're relatively inexpensive. I get them on sale from Lockmaster, and they have a nice high markup. Uh, they're they go for about 200 a piece. And uh, if you you know if you have to buy them regularly, they're about uh, 97 to 100 bucks a piece. So you make 100 bucks. But you can get them on sale for around 45 dollars every year. They run a sale. I buy a couple hundred of them, so I, I stock up, I take them out of the box so I can fit more into here. And then uh, and then my movements, I never buy movements because I'm always replacing manual dials with electronic dials so I get a lot of good movements. As far as movements, I'm talking like S&Gs, uh, D-Bolts, uh, Lagarde, I, so I got the three big brands in here. Um, I carry a lot of the dials off of banks because they, they always want to upgrade to electronic lock. The only problem with these dials are they have a short for the half inch steel plate door, so they're not good for fire safes. So, but I got a couple other dials on the van that are longer shaft, so I can use those same movements. Uh, as small as, as far as small parts go, um, most of this stuff's miscellaneous, and what I'll do is when I do a job and take off good lock hardware, there's a lot of parts that I might keep to use down the road so pretty much I just kind of put in this drawer I remember where I put it brand new strike plates they're out of brand new locks but I maybe left the old strike plate on the door because it looked good so uh, and then here just miscellaneous screws I got uh, brand new key sets when I rekey a bunch of locks the same I'd have a bunch of extra sets so it gives me something to rekey locks to and then uh, 
down here, the same thing. Latches, this miscellaneous parts. So anyways, that gives you my inventory there. I carry a couple uh, commercial door closers, grade one. I'm a big believer in grade one door closers versus grade twos. Uh, that's a Lagarde combo guard lock, which is a more expensive than a swing bolt. I only got a couple of those on the van. Uh, this is a Slage mortise lock. Carry one of those on the van because they're expensive. Uh, boxes of 250 Slage and 250 quick sets back there. I carry that for inventory. And then um, in here I just got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Some electric strikes, some Adams Wright locks, a um, couple T-handles, couple double-sided deadbolts. Uh, just, just, just miscellaneous bubble packages gives me there. And then as far as uh, high security locks, I'm an ASA dealer is my big thing I push. So, um, let's see here, ASA. So here I carry, these are ASA mortise, mortise cylinders and rim cylinders. Some of them have the rim cylinder tailpiece, but mortise, ASA, the thing about ASA mortise cylinders, they could be used as a rim cylinder or a mortise cylinder. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so I got 24 cylinders. Those retail for about $100 a piece. Uh, I think I got the price on here uh, that I sell them for. Um, yeah, like that, that's a key to knob cylinder, that's a mortise cylinder, so $96. Uh, rim cylinders with a tailpiece are $123. My cost is about $58 on those. Um, and then the keys I run, they run $9.50 a piece is what I charge to cut them. So I carry quite a few of these on here because I'm a big believer as you could upsell a job when you're on it. Uh, if you, And you got to watch who you sell these to too because you really want to sell these not to the pizza place that you're going to rekey every six months because if you sell them one of these, they're never going to call you again and you actually lose money. Really, who you want to, and you know, if they ask for it, of course, sell it to them. But really, who you want to sell these to are um, uh, factories, churches, places that don't tend to rekey a lot. They want security and, and they don't mind paying the price for them, but you could do an upsell and. Uh, and if you have it in stock on the van, then you could definitely uh, sell it versus having to come back because you don't want to really come back because then you're not making as much money. Um, let's see, on this side, those are all tools. Um, and then of course I got my inventory of keys, automotive keys, and all my regular keys. Then down here, um, knob cylinders and tail pieces okay so almost all my knob cylinders I take out of locks I take off of customers jobs or locks that I'm putting my own cylinders in then I take uh, take out those cylinders Let's see. give me an idea so so slage knob cylinders just just a, a variety of all different types of cylinders uh, and tail pieces, I got cams and cylinder tail pieces and stuff. So pretty much, I got a little junk bucket back here. So when I do a job, I throw all my scraps in there. And then when I'm slow, I'll go through here and take out the parts that I think I could use. And then I put them in my bins under here. So uh, anyways, that gives you an idea. Uh, mortise, uh, mortise cylinder, slage, and quick set keyways. There's a few other ones in there too. Um, this one here is my best cylinders and slate or and asa parts. And there's a few asa cylinders in here too. So, and then uh, back sets and latches. That's just what it says. A variety of back sets and latches. Um, then my two different biaxial pin kits. I don't have them in a biaxial pin kit. I built my own pin kit just because the biaxial, medical biaxial pin kits were so expensive. So, and then I, we have a trophy shop, so I engrave my own plates. I haven't finished doing it on all of them. And then uh, over here, I have, uh, let me pull. You see these rods here that lift up? I hate bungee cords. So I, what I did is I drilled a hole through the counter, if you can see here, and we just pull out the bar, and then you could access the containers here. In this van I'm still, this is relatively a new van, so I'm still uh, changing it. But pretty much this is Adam's right, dead latches and flip bolts uh, I keep in here. 
so good, good, nice stock. I carry all three sizes, inch and an eighth, uh, what is it, 30, 31, 30 seconds, and then I think there's inch and a quarter, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So there's three different sizes that you run into. Let's see if I can get this back here. Okay. And then uh, mailbox locks, cam locks, uh, bank locks. That's for like the teller vaults and stuff. So I got all those little locks in there. And then this top one here, I, I don't have the right label on here. This is what it came with when I got these. I got these for free. Uh, this one here is pivot hinges. So let me pull this out and show you. This, this is something neat because... You don't have to put a Roton continuous hinge on if if the metal's still good. You could replace the pivot hinge, and it's relatively, you gotta take the door off, but it's a relatively easy process, but it's big profit. So, and then I got a couple of the um, paddle uh, cams there, back sets for the, for the latch plates there. Just different pivot hinges. So, uh, and I've done quite a few of those. Let's see if I can get this back up here with one hand. Okay, it's not that down because I can't do it with one hand. But pretty much that gives you an idea of my inventory I carry on here. And then if there's anything I know that I'm going on a job, I'll throw it on here. I do carry a lot of these, uh, uh, they call them barrel keys. Some people call them skeleton keys, but they're really not a skeleton key, they're a barrel key. So I carry a wide variety of these because I'm always, people are calling me up saying they need a key for a curio cabinet or something. Um, this is my safety deposit box. I haven't put up my safety deposit box key blanks yet for this. Uh, this is a frame and slaughter. But, uh, and then one other thing I did too is I had a bunch of these Ryobi tools, and they're not the best tool, but I had them. So, what's neat about the Ryobi is they make a lot of neat stuff for them. These, these are clips that go where the battery are, and it allows me to hang them up here so I could see my tool where they are. I could unclip it, grab it out, and I got my tool bag there in my vacuum, you know, so I access all this through my side door. And uh, this is my machines. But hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, the inventory I carry on the van. All right, uh, signing off. I'll do a couple other videos here in the near future, but talk to you guys later. Bye.